Rarely is any country well known to the rest of the world and at the same time steeped in such mystery. For it is often agreed that Bhutan has been one of Asia's greatest kept secrets. Journey on the middle path to the land of the Thunder Dragon, a natural haven in its most undisturbed form, a harmonious fusion of the past and present into a vibrant living heritage. Welcome to the Kingdom of Bhutan. Nestled in the Himalayas, Bhutan is a landlocked kingdom encompassing 46,500 square kilometers and bounded by two of the world's largest nations, China to the north and India to its western and southern borders. Bhutan's topography and climate offer its visitors an exciting variation from the tropical lowlands in the south through to lush valleys, temperate forests and awe-inspiring peaks and glaciers in the north. The mighty Himalayas, sacred to the Bhutanese people, are believed to be home to many religious deities. There are 20 peaks over 7,000 meters high to be found in Bhutan. Bhutan's exclusive location has gifted the kingdom with a rich and diverse natural environment so unique that Bhutan is ranked as one of the top 10 global hotspots. Its lush ecosystem is one of its greatest attractions. Bhutan's ecology has been preserved and enriched through policies set under the far-sighted leadership of His Majesty the King, Jigme Singhi Wanchuk. Much of the rooted sense of environmental preservation also stems from traditional Buddhist beliefs that all forms of sentient life are sacred and exist in a delicate web of interdependence. With over 60% of its forest cover intact, Bhutan now has the largest proportion of land under protected areas. Bhutan is a natural paradise with four national parks and 9% of the country designated as biological corridors in which wildlife sanctuaries and a chain of natural reserves protects thousands of animal and plant species. Bhutan is home to a wide range of flora including medicinal plants, orchids, rhododendrons and other endemic plants like the blue poppy, the national flower of Bhutan. Besides rare flora, there is an abundance of wildlife and bird species which can be found in Bhutan. Of these are the internationally endangered species of animals including the golden langur, moss deer, blue sheep, takin, the rufous-necked hornbill and the black-necked crane. The black-necked cranes occupy a particularly special place in the heart of all Bhutanese and are a source of deep inspiration for music and dances because of their beauty and grace. Bhutan is a living canvas of magnificent and dramatic displays of ancient tradition and culture in everyday life, making any journey to this unique kingdom an opportunity of a lifetime. As a predominantly Buddhist kingdom, religion and culture is irrefutably intertwined. Religion plays a fundamental role in all aspects of Bhutanese life, especially the arts, keeping alive Buddhist teachings and values. Bhutan is the only nation to practice Mahayana Buddhism in its Tantric Vajrayana form. These festivals not only offer an opportunity for people to learn about their history and legends depicted in music and dance, but they also impart important Buddhist values and moral lessons often describing the eternal battle of good over evil. Yeah. 
Seichu gatherings are always merry occasions as people dress in their finery and rejoice in the company of family and friends. The famous Drumitsi Ngacham, a dance that originated over five centuries ago, is one of the most anticipated displays. In 2005, it was heralded by UNESCO as one of the masterpieces of the oral and tangible heritage of humanity for its powerful visualization of the spiritual world. To onlookers, Tzechus are a fantastic treat to the senses with magnificent displays of skillful dancing, singing and outlandishly colorful costumes and revelry. It is believed that one gains merit by attending the Techu and that the dancers shower blessings on the onlookers for a better life. Almost all Techus take place in the courtyard of a fortress or zong. Zongs are the perfect example of traditional Bhutanese architecture in its finest form. Cast in stone and elaborate wood carvings, the construction of a zong as with most Bhutanese architecture, has sacred interpretation and dimensions, a legacy born out of Buddhist tradition. Built on holy grounds, the construction and placement of zongs were modeled after the mandala, or ideal Buddhist universe, at the center of which formed a spiritual protected place. Besides zongs, Bhutan's architectural landscape is also made up of over 2,000 monasteries and countless chothans or stupas. Ranging from simple to elaborate structures, these physical expressions of Buddhist faith signify the presence and deliverance of Buddha's teachings. They remind people of compassion and tolerance and offer blessings to passerbys. Constructed in the early 17th century, the magnificent Taksang Monastery is a perfect example of remarkable Bhutanese architecture. Shrouded in mythology, the Taksang is believed to have been built by a saint who flew to Bhutan on the back of a tigress and till this day remains a holy pilgrimage site. Close to any monastery or chorthen, you will also be sure to see prayer flags fluttering in the wind, yet another representation of the deep spirituality of the Bhutanese people. Undoubtedly, the greatest legacy of Bhutan is in its magnificent tradition of the arts. Because of the royal government's dedication to preserve its national heritage, you will find that even in urban towns today, all modern houses and buildings maintain some of the basic elements of traditional architecture and paintings found in rural homes. This has made towns uniquely Bhutanese as you drive away from the towns or trek into the forest, you will be greeted by the serenity found among the hills, the fresh mountain air and the authenticity of rural life. The National Institute of Zorik Chusum, or the Institute of the 13 Arts and Crafts, offers a fascinating insight into the Buddhist artistic tradition. From painting to sculpting, working with metal, paper making and textile weaving. These art forms have evolved over the centuries and are now being developed and taught by the Institute to provide artisans with a sustainable livelihood. The painting tradition in Bhutan, like many of the other art forms, embraces religious themes and produces beautiful works of art. Much of art in Bhutan depict powerful imagery of wrathful and sensual manifestation of deities, both peaceful and terrifying, all instruments of religious teachings. But perhaps one of the crowning glories of Bhutanese handicrafts is its vibrant textile institution. For it is a very common sight in Bhutan to see local people in towns and in their homes dressed in their national clothes. A long wrapped fabric for women called a kira and a shorter robe on men known as a go. 
Bhutanese people are proud to don their national clothing, for they believe that it provides them with a unique cultural identity. Concentrated in the eastern region, the art of weaving has been strongly encouraged by the royal government. And visitors wanting to know more can visit the textile museum established in the capital. It showcases the evolving journey of Bhutanese textiles in the kingdom. With all that has already been said about Bhutan, three words sum up the spirit of the Bhutanese people. Deep spirituality, generosity, and national pride. With a total population of under 700,000, there are three major ethnic groups in Bhutan. The Shashops from the east, the Ngalops from western and central Bhutan, and the Hlotsampas of Nepali origin. This ethnic diversity of the Bhutanese is widely reflected in the numerous languages spoken throughout the kingdom and in the spectacular displays of cultures unique to each. However, though Dzongkha is the national language, you will find that English is widely spoken in urban Bhutan as it is the general medium of instruction. The deep spirituality of the Bhutanese is a source of great strength and comfort. Prayers constitute a daily routine for most Bhutanese and are believed to ease the traverse from this life to the next, a Buddhist principle of the karmic universe. Since Bhutan is a primarily agrarian economy, over 70% of people still live in rural areas and depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. Whether in the villages or any urban town, Bhutanese pride themselves on being natural sportsmen, and this is evident by the large number of traditional and modern sports played today. Most popular of all of these, however, with rural and urban sportsmen alike, is archery, the national sport, played both with traditional bamboo bows and arrows, and modern imported compound bows. Whatever the equipment, an archery game in Bhutan is always more than just a sport. Like a techu, every archery event is festive, colorful and alive with music, dance and merrymaking. It is an affair in true Bhutanese fashion and a truly unforgettable experience. Bhutanese food, like Bhutanese culture and its people, is vastly colorful and vibrant. It combines a tantalizing blend of hot chili flavors and local vegetables and meats. Chilies, in all colors and sizes, are the undisputed toast of local cuisine. Often treated as a vegetable, chilies served raw with cheese or in other dishes constitutes a staple diet in Bhutan. Most dishes are also served with indigenous red rice and butter tea, a very Bhutanese custom. Since its inception, the development of the tourism industry has been consistently guided by its policy of high quality in an effort to ensure the preservation and promotion of Bhutan's environment, its tradition, culture and values. With activities and events throughout the year, each season has something special to offer. Above all, the true charm of Bhutan is in the unique experience that awaits everyone, making it a journey of a lifetime. <laughs>